So he had asked me, he said, since you found something about so much about the Great Pyramid, I wonder why there's not a the perfect pyramid. If you think about it, the Great Pyramid is um, isosceles triangle faces, but if you had a perfect pyramid, it would be this. It would be the half octahedral pyramid. And I'm putting in the, these measurements here. That would be half base would be square root of one. The half base there, square root of one. The side is two times the square root of one. The half diagonal is root two. The height is root two. The, the, the apothem slope is root three. The corner slope is root four. It's all that would be a, a perfect pyramid. Why is there not a perfect pyramid? Maybe there is. Maybe it's still buried under the sand somewhere. We, 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 we're not aware of it yet. But the one that is there is, is the one that we know about is the Great Pyramid. Now, this half octahedral pyramid I just announced there, showed you that's the angle. Here's the Great Pyramid. It's like a squashed down version of that. And it has the following... Uh, measurements uh, based on cubits, 440 cubit base, 280 cubit height, gives you these numbers. You don't need to follow the math of this. I'm just showing them to, 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 to clue you in as to how they gel with uh, what Nassim asked me to do. So I, in looking at the comparisons, he says, can you find anything that's in the half octahedral pyramid um, that would illustrate why they chose this particular shape of the Great Pyramid, which is not, when you think of it, it's not the perfect, it's not the perfect pyramid. The perfect pyramid would be the half octahedral. So anyway, I looked at this, there's the actual values, and I'm just going to show you in a nutshell very, very quickly. If you take that angle and this angle, and you literally compare the ratio, it turns out that it's it's very, very accurately, very close to what's called the reduced Planck constant. Planck constant is supposedly the tiniest possible quantum of measurement that there is down at way sub 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 atomic level. Not just subatomic particles, but millions, trillions down beneath that. There's this thing called the Planck and it's there to 99.9% .9 accuracy in the comparison of these side slopes. The other thing is that that would be an angular comparison. What about if you took a linear comparison? And I just did the same thing there with just comparing simply. You know, math should be beautiful, but it should be simple, as Einstein said. It shouldn't be deeply complex. You should be able to see it as simple as this. Compare the height of one to the height of the other, and when you do that, you end up with this number that is 1.1111 and then it deviates to some other numbers. And that looks suspicious to me because I thought, well, you know what, that really should be, if there's perfection inherent in this, which there must be, and we know that. We go by the assumption, right, first of all, that the, the universe is perfect and it's based on perfect geometry. You'd think that number would be 1.1111111111 and maybe it is because we're looking at the Great Pyramid uh, severely damaged, severely eroded over thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So what are we to say that, no, no, it's precisely this. I've suspected for a long time that that, that 440 to 80 ratio is minutely off because if you set it off minutely from that and you actually get the speed of light in the in the inscribed circle of the base and the exoscribed circle of the base so there's a lot of information heading towards the fact that yes it's probably the minutest little element off from that in other words this special number 1.1111111 now so that was interesting, and I decided to do some research into what would that mean. I, I called this finding the, the unity constant, U. And by looking at another person's old work, Peter Plichter, he had looked at a certain way of doing some new math, uh, which seemed related to this. It wasn't exactly this, and I'm not going to sort of delve deeply into the math, but just quickly top and tail it. What really is going on here is that, is the, that ratio of that side slope is, is, is literally going diagonally. It's called the, the run over rise and it's those numbers. But as I say, those numbers, if they were off by maybe a hair, they would end up being giving us the perfection of, of what I'm going to show you here because the 
half octahedral pyramid would have the, the same half diagonal as height and therefore run over rise of that one would be simply one. That pyramid would represent one unity. The Great Pyramid represents this. It, it, it's really as close as that. It's really 10 over 9, which really becomes, you can wipe out that almost equals, it would equal that. And so that seems to be what the truth is behind the Great Pyramid half octahedral relationship. I took it further to compare something. If you square that number, if you square 1.1111111 out to infinity, you end up with this number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9. So 8 is missing over and over and over and over. Now, as I say, this gentleman, Peter Plichter, who's in Germany, he had done a similar experiment mathematically with this ratio of 1 over 81, which is related anyway to that 10 over 9. It just shifts the decimal a bit. And he found the same thing. And his he had said, what about, what if that number really should indicate, what if those eights should be there and it really should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and all the way out to infinity. A very interesting concept. If you do that, I'm going to put them in brackets there, the 10, the 11, the 12, so you can see it more clearly. In other words, you would have a number that consists beautifully of every single number that there is out to infinity, just integer numbers. But they would have to behave in a certain way that when you add them together, you know, when we add a 10 to something, we shift it across um, uh, so that its integrity of its position is held. So that 10 would slide across and you would add them up like this and you'd end up with a number that says, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, zero, zero. And then you add the 11 to that. And you do, what, what happens? I'm going to take you through this very, very quickly. I'm, you don't have to follow it all the way through the hundreds and then the thousands and all the way to infinity. What happens is it ends up giving you this number that's the, that has all the eights missing. But what it really is, is a telescoped version of every possible number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty. 12, 30. But just directed in a certain way to honor the integrity of those numbers. And what this led me to was just that this incredible thing of you've got one number that consists of only ones. So that's only ones. And it produces, when you square it, a number that is every single number out to infinity that can possibly exist in the universe, any universe. I don't care what universe you're talking about, right? Because it's just integers. It's just a simple one and two and three and four, adding, adding. There's a spiritual message, a deep spiritual message in that, is saying from unity comes everything. And they're related in this beautiful equation that the one point, one, 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 one squared equals every number out to infinity. And that, I called it the, the, the unity constant. And we ended up saying, well, that's something, but I just did this other experiment because I knew that the number 111 is so important to Shakespeare. Uh, it's Bacon's actual uh, simple cipher code. Francis Bacon added up in, in simple cipher is 111. Sonnet 111 gives us clues to that. There's all kinds of things referencing around it. It's also one of De Vere's numbers in another way. So I thought, well, I wonder what happens when you multiply by that? Because the integral essence of that is, oh, that's the Trinity, isn't it? It's the, it's the three in one, and it's the one in three. You multiply it by one, 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 it gives you this number, which is, as near as damn it, the fine structure constant. Stunning. Now, you know, who's to say that the fine structure constant that we know right now is not consistent throughout the whole universe. There's a whole theory about this. Maybe it does shift and maybe its average is precisely this number, 137.037037037. Wouldn't be surprising. We'll find out when we get there. Point is, the beauty of that, the simplicity of it, the elegance of it is a simple, beautiful equation. Every number from just the number that contains only one. Pretty beautiful.